Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about user experience and civil liberties, which seem to have nothing to do with one another. But let me start off with user experience and HCI. H is, HCI is human computer interaction, human machine interfaces. These are the most boring fields in the world as far as I was concerned when I was young especially human computer interaction which was sort of uh, closer to me and it's about how to set up software so that it jives most well with the humans that are using them and it really did sound secondary or tertiary and not worth doing but my view on that has changed radically over time now I would describe user experience, user design, HCI, these sorts of fields as in fact fundamental in fact much of the HCI and and user experience that's done wasn't on purpose per se, it's happened by virtue of cultural evolution which has shaped much of the structures of society and the artifacts around us to fit our human minds. So for example, I've argued in an uh, earlier book, Vision Revolution, that the reason that we can even read in the first place is because letters have shaped themselves to look like the structures and natural scenes that we've already evolved. We have visual recognition systems that are, that are brilliantly designed to recognize those things. Otherwise we couldn't read at all. The only reason that we can have speech and recognize speech is because speech, as I've argued and harnessed, speech has culturally evolved over longer periods of time to sound like the solid object events around you. And much of the kinds of design that's in the, in the structure of culture around you is in fact designed to mesh with our peculiar mind in the way that it evolved. And so it pulls out these natural brilliant instincts that were for one thing and twists it just a little bit so that it fits these new things in the world. But these new things in the world, and that's key, have actually have done all the twisting. They've twisted themselves into the shape that harnesses our human mind. And then this book, Human 3.0, is really all about that story, about how we became human 2.0s today by virtue of these mechanisms. These are UX mechanisms. And then Human 3.0 is about where we're going next as a species. Well, how do these UX things connect to individual liberties and civil rights? Well, there's three different kinds of arguments, uh, among many, um, for why you would have civil rights as a fundamental constraint on government. And especially today with the coronavirus and the fear and hysteria surrounding it, much of the world seems to be happy to reshape society for their grand scheme at saving us all. But the problem with that is that if you have a grand scheme for saving everybody, you better, it better be consistent with civil rights and individual liberties. Why? Well, the first reason is just because it is a fundamental right. The government, the state, doesn't have a right to use us as ends for themselves. A second is something I talked about just a couple moments ago in uh, moment number 55, and that's that culture and society is filled and steeped with a lot of design that we don't know. We haven't even identified it, much less unpacked what it is. You start messing with parts of the society with your grand scheme, and you're going to completely mess things up. And the second part of that was that society is filled with self-organizing mechanisms that nobody is in a position to control or have knowledge about, and we don't understand that. So your grand scheme is probably not going to work. It's probably ridiculously stupid. And even, and this gets to number three and why UX comes into this, user design, the third, even if you have this great idea that could actually work if people would just do what you suggested that they do, the problem is that people won't do what you suggest they do if it's not consistent with their human nature. And their human nature wants to have freedom. Their human nature is not going to act like you want it to. They want to be free. They want to make their own decisions. They want to socialize with others. They want to have their faces free to communicate and socially Emotion, emotionally uh, express one another to one itself. All of these things have to happen for humans to feel free. If your grand scheme is inconsistent with that, it's not going to work. These are the so this third fundamental pillar for why we have civil liberties is based on user experience, user design, the offshoots of human computer interaction. These are about how to fit a society around the humans that are actually in them. And to do that, society needs to harness our natural human nature. And that human nature wants to be free. That was your science moment.